booing. They're up in arms, but it doesn't matter. It's time for Warriors Wrap Up. We'll bring you into the locker room and hear from Coach Kerr and the players. Highlights from the game, Warriors Wrap Up starts now. Yes, indeed it does. Warriors knock off the Lakers 134 to 120. The highlight you just heard, Kevin Dana here on 95-7 the game. It was GP2 that helped seal it. An epic block of Rui Hachimura leading to a Clay Thompson three. One of 26 threes the Warriors made a new season high. One off a franchise record, and the Warriors used their hot shooting uh, to get a win. 134-120 is the final. The Warriors have now won eight of their last nine games. They take the season series from the Lakers three games to one. And as we look at the Western Conference standings as a busy Tuesday in the association has come and gone, the Warriors are only a half game behind the Lakers for the nine. And the Warriors have the tiebreaker and a full game behind the Kings for the eight. The Kings do have the tiebreaker there, uh, but there is room for the Warriors to climb in the Western Conference standings as a result of today's win. Welcome into Warriors Wrap Up here on 95.7 The Game. It's Mark Randy with you. I want to hear from you guys tonight. 888-957-9570. We're going to dive into this game and the key moments and what it means and all of that. I think for me personally, as I just top of mind after this Warriors win... I'm getting a little bit of confidence back about this group. I don't know how you guys feel. That's my question to you. Are you getting a little bit of confidence back? I'm already seeing some of it on the YouTube chat, youtube.com slash 957thegame, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. I'm seeing it on the Xfinity Mobile text line as well, the 510, the 707, the 408, all chiming in as we speak right now. Uh, there are some Warrior fans who are thinking, oh, may- maybe this group is is proving me wrong just a little bit. Um, time will tell ultimately on that, and there's still a lot of room, uh, a lot of um, areas where the Warriors are going to have to keep checking boxes in order for some of uh, our predictions maybe to be proven wrong, considering they're still locked into a play-in spot, but there is room for them to grow. They can realistically get up to the eight, and I know today down in L.A., the Lakers did not have Anthony Davis, and he clearly, clearly makes a big impact. LeBron at his age is still incredible, uh, but for my money, Anthony Davis is their most valuable and their most important player, and without him, they're an entirely different basketball team, but the Warriors still go down to L.A. They take care of business. They beat the Lakers by 14. They shoot incredible from the field. They go 26 for 41 from deep. Not only the most made threes for the Warriors this season, uh, but also the best percentage from deep. They shoot 63.4% from downtown, making 26 threes. They shoot 59% from the field in total. They put up 134 points, uh, and they led this game wire to wire. A wire-to-wire victory. It did get a little bit hairy at a couple of points. Midway through the third quarter, the Lakers cut it to a five-point game. Warriors immediately responded with a great run to close the third quarter to put the lead right back up uh, to 17 points going into the fourth quarter. Lakers put together a bit of a run, but then the Warriors closed it with some big threes. Clay hit a three, but Kaminga hit a three. GP2 hit a couple of big threes. <laughs> There was a lot of that, a lot of that from Kevin Dana tonight. If you were listening to the game here on 95.7, the game, Kevin Dana filling in for Tim Roy. Uh, he was busy calling made threes, 26 of them. The Warriors ride that to a victory. They're now 44 and 35. And again, only a half game behind the Lakers for the nine seed in the West, a full game behind the Kings for the eight. The Warriors have the tiebreaker as a result of tonight's win. They have beaten the Lakers three out of four times in the regular season series. That means because the Lakers have played one extra game, currently they have two games remaining in their schedule. The Warriors have three. They're even in the loss column. The Lakers 45 and 35. The Warriors 44 and 35. If the Warriors win out, they are at worst the nine. The Warriors, if they went out, they beat Portland on the road on Thursday. They beat um, 
New Orleans at home on Friday, and then they beat the Jazz at home on Sunday. They will finish ahead of the Lakers in the Western Conference standings. The Warriors control their own destiny as it relates to Warriors versus Lakers now. Warriors went out. There is nothing the Lakers can do. Every Lakers loss, they have two games left. They have Memphis and New Orleans on the road. Every Lakers loss allows the Warriors one loss of their own that they can survive in terms of uh, being ahead of the Lakers when it's all said and done in the Western standings. Where it gets a little bit trickier is when you're chasing down the Kings. The Kings are a full game ahead of you. You both have three games left, and the Kings have the tiebreaker over the Golden State Warriors as a result of division record. The two teams split their four matchups in the regular season, and the Warriors probably kicking themselves right now because they did lose one game to the Kings this year where they had a 20-point lead. Uh, It was the game early in the year in Sacramento where Moses Moody was out of the rotation, came in, hit some big threes early in the fourth, then was moved back to the bench, and the Warriors lost the lead, and the Kings won that game. If you just hold on in that one, you would be the eight as it stands right now, and you'd have the tiebreaker over the Kings. I know that's a lot of ifs, uh, but the Warriors, if, if things don't work out and say they finish as the nine or the 10, and they don't get past the Kings, you might be looking at that game uh, as one that really, really hurt you. Uh, But long story short, you control your destiny when it comes to the Lakers. You're a game behind the Kings, but they have the tiebreaker, which means over the final three games, if you want to leapfrog the Kings, you need to gain two two games on them. So let's assume the Warriors win their final three. Again, Portland on the road, followed by New Orleans at home, and then Utah at home. If you go 3-0 and to close the regular season, the Warriors would need the Kings to go 1-2 and or worse. And the Kings have New Orleans as well. These are all at home. New Orleans, Phoenix, and Portland. Well, those are two losable games. Now, the Kings are certainly capable of pulling those out themselves. New Orleans, Phoenix, and Portland is how the Kings wrap things up. If they go win-win-loss or any combination of two wins and a loss, uh, they will finish ahead of the Warriors in the Western Conference standings. If they lose two of those three and the Warriors win out, the Warriors will finish ahead of the Kings. If the the Kings lose all three, the Warriors can go 2-1 and and pass the Sacramento Kings in the Western Conference standings. You can survive um, survive a couple of... Again, the, the, the Kings, pardon me, the Kings have to either lose all of their games and you lose only one, or the Kings lose two of three and you win out. You can survive uh, not a lot. You need some help. You need some help. But there is definitely a path to that. And if they lose to New Orleans and Phoenix and you win out, you will finish ahead of the Kings. And if the Warriors win out, you will finish ahead of the Lakers. You don't need any help there. You take care of your own business and you will jump the Los Angeles Lakers, which is what made this game so important. This was really a turning point uh, for the Warriors season. I know we only have three games left, but if you lost tonight, uh, you could you could essentially pack things up and just prepare for the 9-10 game in either L.A. or Sacramento. You could get ready for it. You could rest Steph. You could rest Draymond. You could rest Clay, Wiggins, Kaminga, anyone you wanted. If you determined that was what was best for you, uh, you didn't really need to go and chase the next three games. But by winning tonight in L.A., uh, you essentially afforded yourself uh, something left to fight for. And the Warriors still have a lot to fight for. Uh, dis- despite the Warriors' road record this year, now 24-16 and 16 on the road, 20-19 and 19 at home, I can guarantee you they'd rather be at home than on the road, whether it is L.A. or Sacramento, looking likelier now that it would be L.A. if it is the 9-10 matchup for the Warriors because the Lakers lost tonight and they didn't gain any ground on the Kings. Uh, the Warriors would rather be home. And the, the nine seed, it's not a given, but you don't need any help to get that done. So that is still something to play for. And if you get a good result or two from the Kings, you could be the eight, which obviously is a major, major selling point for the Golden State Warriors because if you're the eight, you get two bites at the play in Apple. You play in the seven and eight game. If you win that, congrats, you're the seven. If you lose that, guess what? You have another shot to be the eight. 
Uh, so the Warriors have a ton to play for, and they gave themselves the right to keep fighting for something by winning tonight, and they got it done on the offensive end. They did buckle down defensively uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, in, I guess in the second half a little bit more than they did in the first half, but there were some openings for the Lakers, but this was an offensive game. Clay Thompson putting together another great shooting night. He finishes with 27 points, goes 10 for 16 from the field, 5 of 10 from downtown. Andrew Wiggins kind of quietly 17 points. I mean, he was uber efficient, 7 for 12 from the field. Three of five from downtown. Draymond Green, I don't know how I got this far, like almost 10 minutes in without talking about what he did. He was five for five from deep in the first half. Dr- Draymond Green, that's not, I'm not misspeaking here. That's a fact. Draymond Green was five for five from three point land in the first half. He finishes, hey! yep, three. Draymond Green made five of them, five for seven in total, five for his first five in the first half, 15 points, also had six rebounds and 10 assists. Steph Curry, 23 points on nine shot attempts, the most efficient um, sh- like shooting game for Steph Curry in quite a while, 23 points on only nine field goal attempts, seven of nine from the field, was perfect from downtown, six for six, from deep, also seven rebounds and eight assists. Steph Curry was awesome in this game. Uh, off the bench, Brandon Pajemski was nearly perfect. 13 points, five of six from the field. He was three for three from downtown. Chris Paul was his normal, solid self off the bench. Uh, 11 points in nearly 25 minutes, and he was a team and game high plus 21 in his time. Uh, Gary Payton, the second, sealed the game with his block of Rui Hachimura, also hit a couple of big threes. He had nine points, three of six from the field. Kaminga, a little bit quiet, eight points, two of eight shooting, uh, but he was solid, made a big three in that third quarter to help uh, stem the tide and, and kind of stop a Lakers run at one point. Uh, the Warriors got contributions from all over the place, uh, and they win by a final score, 134-120. to 120. The Warriors have won 8 of 9. They're a half game behind the Lakers, own the tiebreaker, own, uh, you know, they control their own destiny when it comes to the Lakers in the Western Conference standings, and they're now only a game behind the Kings for 8th in the Western Conference. Tonight was a huge night for the Warriors, and we're talking to you guys all night long here on Warriors Wrap-Up on 95.7 The Game. It's Mark Randy with you. 888-957-9570. Let's begin by going out to the phone lines. Up first is Drew down in Tracy. I know Drew wants to talk about this Warriors win. What's up, Drew? You're on Warriors wrap up on 95.7 The Game. How you doing tonight? Warriors. I got to keep it. I got to keep it. Ben Franklin. Keep it 100. I actually had Bowling tonight. You know, I shot a 612. Not too bad. But um, I got to go a little box score Betty as far as my analysis tonight. But uh, Curry, Clay, Pajemski, Wiggins, GP2, all were hitting from the floor. The Warriors were cooking. Apparently, there's no D in Los Angeles Lakers. So <laughs> let's go, Warriors. Let's finish this season out strong. Warriors! Yeah, thanks, Drew. Thanks, Drew. I mean, it does... It becomes a little bit easier to score in the Lakers when they don't have Anthony Davis. Um, now it was the, it was a very bad defensive showing for them. I mean, there was one point, and it was a, a big a big point in this game. I forget exactly when it was. I think it was in the third quarter um, when the Lakers put together a little bit of a run. Let's see if I can find it. Um, the Lakers put together a little bit of a run. They got back within maybe five or six, and no, actually, it was in the fourth quarter. This was this was one of the funnier moments of the game. So the Warriors go into the third quarter, or pardon me, go into the fourth quarter up by 17 because of that big 15 to three run to close the third. Right, the Lakers got back within five, and then the Warriors go on a 15 to three run, and they lead by 17 going into the fourth. Then the Lakers open the fourth on a nine nothing run. And you're thinking, "Uh uh-oh, here we go again. Like, it was a game of runs. The Warriors had the run in the first half. Lakers early third. Warriors close the third on a big run. Lakers open the fourth on a big run. You're thinking, okay, like, do the Warriors have a run in response? Uh, And they did 
because D'Angelo Russell decided to just simply stop guarding Steph Curry. There was a moment it, the Warriors hadn't even run a play yet. Stephen Curry, top of the key, has the ball in his hands, and D'Angelo Russell's kind of closely guarding him. And I don't know if, if Steph, if there was a screen and there was some contact with D'Angelo Russell's face or something, and Steph Curry passed the ball away to Chris Paul to the right wing, and D'Angelo Russell, trying to sell a foul call, like puts his hands on his face, steps back like four steps into the paint, and like keeled over in pain, although I don't think it was real pain, and just leaves the best shooter the game of basketball has ever seen wide open on the top of the key for a three. Chris Paul smartly passes the ball back to Steph, and he hits the warm-up three. Lakers run, and Lakers momentum gone. D'Angelo Russell holding his face in his hands in the paint. D'Angelo, I don't know what the hell you're doing. You just gave Steph Curry a wide open three. He hit it. That was the beginning of a Warrior run in the fourth quarter, and that ended the game. So, D'Angelo Russell, great work. You gave Steph Curry a wide open three. He was not missing today. Six for six from downtown Stephen Curry. Um, Drew down is right. Uh, a bad defensive effort for the Lakers, and that's just one moment uh, to pinpoint D'Angelo Russell, not sure what the hell you're doing there, um, but it is a little bit more difficult when you're defensive player of the year candidate, uh, and he might be the DPOI if he plays enough games um, when he's not there, and you certainly take a little bit of a hit defensively. Um, but as a whole, uh, not a very good showing by the Lakers defense. The Warriors shoot uh, 59% from the field. They make a season-high 26 threes. Uh, and also, they shoot a season-high percentage from downtown. 63.4% from downtown tonight. They make a season-high. One off of a franchise-high 27 made threes was the most the Warriors have made in a single game. They've done that twice. 29 is the NBA all-time high set by the Bucks a few years ago. The Warriors um, nearly set some franchise records, and they got close to some NBA records. And a lot of that is just credit the shot-making. Steph, 6-for-6. Six six. Uh, Draymond Green, 5-for-7. Klay Thompson, 5-for-10. Wiggins, 3-for-5. Pajemski, 3-for-3. Three three. GP2, 2-for-3. So many great shooting nights. Uh Wiggins, 3-for-5. I think I said that, but I want to emphasize that one as well. He was really good in this one. So many great shooting nights for the Warriors. Also, uh, some pretty bad defense by the Lakers. Now, the Warriors' defense wasn't always great either. Uh, a lot of overhelping, uh, a lot of bad closeouts, uh, a lot of kind of some lazy, you know, getting back on defense. There was a moment where Pajemski tried a little too hard to crash the offensive boards off a missed free throw. He fell down. Lakers pushed the ball the other way off of a missed free throw, and it turns into a wide open corner three. Like There were some bad moments defensively for the Warriors as well, uh, but it was not nearly as bad as the Lakers, and the Warriors punished those Laker mistakes on the Lakers' defensive end more so than the Lakers did uh, to the Warriors' defense. So credit to the Warriors. Uh, they took advantage where the Lakers were really struggling, and they win this game 134-120. to uh, And don't get it twisted. Just, just because Anthony Davis did not play does not mean that the Lakers were not caring about this game. They desperately wanted and needed this game. Just think about if the Lakers had won this game today. Uh, they would have jumped the Sacramento Kings they would be a half game ahead of the Kings, and they'd only be a half game behind the Suns for seven. By the way, did you guys see what happened in the Suns-Clippers game today? The Suns and Clippers were doing battle in Phoenix, and the Clippers led like by 30 points in the first quarter, and they got down by 40 at one point. The Suns did fight back, and they made it kind of like a, a 9-10 point game in the second half. Uh, but ultimately, they lose 105-92. to And with that loss, the Suns have fallen back into the plane. The Pelicans have leapfrogged the Suns for six. The, uh, the, the Pelicans are six. The Suns are seven. Kings, eight. Lakers, nine. Warriors, ten. And it's pretty jumbled up, specifically eight through ten. But there could also be some movement six through eight, depending on how things do break uh, the rest of the regular season. Um, but tonight was huge for the Lakers. If they had won... They would be the eight at close of business tonight as we speak right now, and they'd only be a half game behind the Suns for seven. 
The Lakers desperately wanted this game, and they just did not have enough offensive firepower to get it done, or they couldn't stop the Warriors uh, enough times on the defensive end of the floor to allow their offense to get back in it. It doesn't mean that LeBron was bad. I mean, LeBron just continues to amaze. Uh, he had 33 points, 14 for 22 from the field, 7 rebounds, 11 assists. He was really good in this game. Austin Reeves kept them in it in the first half. I don't know how you guys feel, and you can let me know, 888-957-9570. I was a little worried. It felt like a half where the Warriors and I'm talking about the first half, where they were incredible shooting the ball in the first half. 15 for 22 from deep in the first half. 15 for 22 in the first half from downtown, yet you only led by 11. I don't know how you guys felt. Going into halftime, I was thinking, you get that kind of shooting half, you should be up by 20. And there was a little bit of a push by the, by the Lakers and Reeves late in the second quarter, kept it an 11-point game instead of like a 20, 22, 23-point game, which is it, it felt like it should have been considering how you shot the ball. Um, now, you, you ultimately did hold on, and, and you, you punished the Lakers in the second half as well. But I was a little wary about that. Ended up not mattering. Um, but the Warriors felt like they were in a little bit of danger of wasting an incredible shooting performance in the first half. But they back it up. They shoot really well in the second half as well. And they run the Lakers out of the building. Again, the final score, 134 to 120. All right, Warriors wrap-up continues here on 95.7 The Game. It's Mark Randy with you. Let's go back out to the phone lines. 888-957-9570. Up next is Malik in Union City. Malik, what's up? You're on 95.7 The Game. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, man. Warriors wins always make me feel a lot better at night. Um, it was a great game. Uh, very proud of the boys uh, tonight. They did their thing. Um, I, I, I just want to just shout out the core. Uh, you see the stat line, and, and they jump out the most. Uh, anybody who thinks that they're done and they're washed, uh, I think they take that to heart. I think they take that real personally um, and excited to see what they do down the stretch uh, to reaffirm their position uh, in the NBA and the West. Uh, as that dynastic core. Um, but I just wanted to touch one thing uh, before I go on um, the, the tiebreaker situation that we got. Um, I know you talked about the Kings and the Lakers. I still think we have a chance, uh, if my math is correct, uh, to catch the Pelicans too. Um, I think the last games are against us, the Kings and the Lakers. Uh, if they lose all three um, and we win out, we can jump them for the eighth seed along with the Lakers as well. Um, so there's a lot of things uh, coming up. Warriors right now, we just got to take care of business. Um, and if we take care of that business, uh, we can be looking at a playoff spot this year and another uh, part two of the We Believe era uh, Warriors coming in 2024. Uh, Y'all have a good night. Go Dub Nation. Yep. Thanks, Malik. Appreciate it. Uh, so actually, looking at the standings, and I'm going to get this 100% right, so stick with me as I, as I talk through this with you live on the air. Uh, so as you look at the standings right now, the Pelicans are the six. Because of what happened tonight, the Suns have fallen to the seven. The Pelicans are three full games ahead of the Warriors. Both teams have three games left. Now, what Malik said was if the Pelicans lose out and the Warriors win out, the Warriors could still catch the Pelicans, and that is technically true because right now the two teams have played twice and they've split the regular season series and they have a head-to-head matchup coming. The Pelicans have at Sacramento, at Golden State, and then at home against the Lakers. If the Pelicans lose all of those and the Warriors win out, the Warriors would finish with the same record as the Pelicans, and as a result of the Warriors beating the Pelicans in the second-to-last game of the season, the Warriors would have the tiebreaker. So that is still uh, possible for the Warriors. However, the Suns are closer right now to the Warriors than the Pelicans are. The Warriors, however... Uh, do not have the tiebreaker against the Suns. The Suns have beaten the Warriors three of the four times those two teams have played. As a result, the Suns, uh, the two-game lead over the Warriors, plus the tiebreaker. So for all intents and purposes, the Pelicans and the Suns are the same distance away from the Warriors. The Warriors would need the Suns to also lose out, and the Suns have on their schedule, as we've already talked about, uh, the Clippers, the Kings, and the T-Wolves all on the road. Those are certainly losable. Um, so we're kind of splitting hairs. You need everything to go your way. 
Uh, you got a couple of teams in the Pelicans and the Suns who have a tough schedule. The Warriors, though, cannot afford any more wins from those teams or any losses uh, yourself. So as a result, Malik, I think I'm a little less focused on those games and more focused on the Lakers and the Kings matchups because those are more likely and you have just a little bit more breathing room there. Um, but mathematically, you are not yet eliminated, in fact, from uh, getting ahead of the Suns and the Pelicans. Now, there's so many games in between the two, like Pelicans, Suns, Kings, Lakers, Warriors. There's so many head-to-head matchups still left, like the Warriors play the Pelicans, the Kings play the Pelicans, the Lakers play the Pelicans. I don't think the Warriors could jump every single one of those teams and get, say, to the sixth seed. Um, because they need everyone ahead of them to lose, and you got so many head-to-head matchups left that invariably someone is going to win that game that's going to knock the Warriors out of, say, the sixth seed or whatever. I'd have to really tackle that with pen and paper, and I don't have the time to do it right now. I don't think the sixth seed is possible, but if we're talking about jumping individual teams, sure, there is still mathematically a way for the Warriors to jump both the Pelicans and the Suns and the Kings and the Lakers Uh, but you're not going to be able to jump all of them. I don't know that 100%, um, but just looking at these head-to-head matchups, given that someone is going to have to win in Pelicans versus Kings, for example, I don't think it's possible for the Warriors to jump every single one of those teams. Now, there are machinations where they could jump the Pelicans. There are machinations where they could jump the Suns and the Kings and so on and so forth. But for everything to work out where they could jump every single one of them, I, I don't know. It, w- it would take a little bit of time for me to figure that one out. But certainly it's mathematically possible the Warriors finish ahead of the Pelicans or the Suns or the Kings or the Lakers or some combination of two or three of them. Um, but the nine spot is very likely for the Warriors. The eight is on the table, but relatively unlikely. The seven, very unlikely. And the six, I think, is just about nearly mathematically impossible. Um, but the Warriors, with this recent stretch, they've won eight of their last nine. Only loss recently was on the road in Dallas, one of the hottest teams in the NBA. You could argue the Warriors and the Mavericks, the two hottest teams in the NBA. That's your only loss recently. The Warriors are getting hot at the right time. And I don't know how you guys feel, um, but this team has given me a little bit of confidence. I'm gaining a little bit of belief in them. And if it if it weren't for... The, the barrier that is the plane and the challenge that is awaiting this team getting out of the plane just to win the right to play in a playoff series, I'd be a lot more confident in this team's ability to make a run. But the plane is kind of a crapshoot. You don't know what's going to happen. If you're in the 9 or 10 spot, which is still the most likely area for the Warriors to be by a wide margin, if you're in that, you have to win two games at least one of which is on the road, maybe both on the road, just to get to the postseason. And who knows what the hell can happen in a single game, let alone two single games. Essentially two Game 7 scenarios. You never know what's going to happen. Now, if the Warriors shoot the ball like they did tonight, I'm picking them to win those games. I mean, you get this kind of Clay Thompson, my God, there's not many teams in the NBA that are going to beat you. Clay Thompson recently, just look at what he's done. Tonight, Clay Thompson, 27 points, 10 for 16 from the field, 5 for 10 from downtown. Last time out, Sunday against Utah, he scores 32 points, 12 for 23 from the field, 6 of 13 from downtown. Not his best shooting night in Dallas before that, 7 for 17 from the field and 2 of 8 from downtown for 16 points. But before that, 29 points in the win in Houston, 11 for 15 from the field, 7 for 11 from downtown. He is putting together uh, a lot of those classic clay heater games from like the 2018, 2019, even before that era Warriors teams. He's doing that more and more recently. And if he can keep that up, which is a major, major ask, Uh, This Warriors team looks entirely different. And then you take a look at a quiet 17. And I I say quiet in a complimentary way, because if you're getting 17 points quietly, that means you're doing it very efficiently and it's repeatable. And Wiggins didn't do anything terribly out of the ordinary today. He just was his normal of late solid self. 17 points, 7 of 12, 3 of 5 from downtown, 4 rebounds, 
Uh, three blocked shots. He did a really good job defensively for the most part. One of the Warriors' best defenders tonight. Uh, you get that Wiggins and this Clay, and there's a reason why so many people say, uh, I don't know if I'd want to play this team in the playoffs, and I think I'm with them. If they play like this, they're going to be really, really tough to beat. Not that I'm calling an upset over the, the Nuggets or whoever it is if they get out of the plane, but they're not going to be an easy out if they play like this. Now, on the other hand, they have a really large sample size of struggling and being inconsistent. But if they play like they have recently, and you get this Clay and that Andrew, there are a few teams in the league that would be able to knock the Warriors off in a seven-game series. That's how I feel. All right, we got to take a quick break here on Warriors Wrap Up. When we come back, we'll get back out to the phone lines. Mark, I see you were coming to you. If you want to get your call in, give us a call right now, 888-957-9570. We'll also hear from Steve Kerr coming up in just a little bit. It's Warriors Wrap Up after another Warriors win, this time in L.A., 134-120. to It's Mark Randy with you on 95.7 The Game. More coming up next on 95.7 The Game. Navian tankless water heaters, the proven leader in condensing technology. Request a Navian because you deserve the best in endless hot water delivery. Learn about Navian's condensing tankless water heaters and find a Navian contractor at tankless.
Dolce in Los Angeles. Yay! Now back to Warriors Wrap Up on 95.7 The Game. That's Kevin Dana filling in for Jim Roy today. So Espanol from Kevin Dana today calling Draymond Green's fifth made three. What did he say? Verde es la verdad esta noche. <laughs> Green is the truth tonight. That's what that translates to, I think. Uh, and he was at least shooting the ball. Draymond Green was awesome tonight. Uh, seven, uh, five for seven from the field. How about this? Draymond Green, every single one of his field goal attempts tonight was a three-pointer. I don't have the ability to, and it just clicked in my mind right now, that every single field goal attempt he took tonight was a three. I don't have the ability to confirm this. I would be willing to bet that was the first time in a very, very long time that every single one of Draymond Green's field goal attempts in a single game were threes. That, that feels like that never happens. Draymond Green is a scared to shoot from outside of the paint oftentimes. And every single one of his field goal attempts tonight were from downtown. And I don't blame him. I mean, you made your first five. Keep hoisting, Dre. And he's 5 for 7 in total, 5 for 7 from the field, and 5 for 7 from deep. 15 points, uh, was 4 rebounds shy of a triple-double, had 15 points, 6 rebounds, 10 assists. Did turn the ball over 4 times. A couple of them were sloppy that led to the third-quarter run uh, for the Lakers. Also had a block. And without Anthony Davis in there, he was able to do a little bit more defensively. Maybe it gave him a little bit more energy offensively. Whatever the reason for Draymond Green, uh, he was awesome. He was awesome in this game. Five for five from three in the first half. Uh, that was his career high for made threes in any half in his career. Uh, his career high for a full game, if you are curious, by the way, seven. He did that back in December of 2014. And five made threes in a single game, which he had in the first half. Did not make one in the second half. Uh, it's the most threes he's hit in a single game since 2017. Uh, so an epic night for Draymond Green. And he was just one of many Warriors who had an epic shooting night. If you're ask if you're asking me to like pinpoint uh, the most impressive shooting night, it would kind of be difficult to do. You think about Draymond and five for seven from downtown, and maybe when you compare it to expectations, that would take the cake. Considering you don't expect Draymond to to make more than two threes, I and mean, he's been pretty decent this year. He'll give you one a decent number of games, uh, but when he gets to two, you feel you feel kind of lucky. He gets to three or more, and you're beyond blessed. He goes five for five from downtown, and it feels like you're living in an alternate reality. Um, so maybe when you consider an expectations, it would be Draymond. But, I mean, Andrew Wiggins was three for five from downtown, seven for 12. Steph Curry was seven for nine and did not miss a three, made every single of his six uh, three-point attempts. Uh, Clay Thompson was 10 for 16 and 5 for 10. And don't look now, but Clay over his last four games is 47.6% from downtown. Whew. Difficult to choose just one. I mean, Pajemski off the bench was 5 for 6, was 3 for 3 from downtown. GP2 was 2 for 3 on threes. Like, there is a lot to choose from in terms of these shooting nights. For the Golden State Warriors. All right, let's go back out to the phone lines here on Warriors Wrap Up on 95.7 The Game. Mark Randy with you. Up next is Wayne in Windsor. Wayne, what's up? You're on Warriors Wrap Up here on 95.7 The Game. Wayne, how you doing tonight? Okay, thanks for taking my call. Um wanted to ask first, I wanted to make one comment, but I, I just got to thinking that. Um, is uh, is Tim Roy okay? He hasn't been on, and I don't know if you skipped parole or or what the deal is, but uh, I miss him. He's a very excellent announcer. And really, uh, the reason why I did call was to mention about, you know, the Warriors skipping all these teams, like, man, gosh, maybe we can, maybe we can skip uh, all of our other competitors and get down to number six or something like that. But, you know, um, I was thinking it'd be kind of hard because let's say, for example, in some of these games, let's just take New Orleans playing the Lakers. I don't know if they do, but just as an example, if they if, if for it to go all right for the Warriors, um, let's say the Pelicans play the Lakers 
they would both have to lose to each other, which obviously is impossible for the layers to uh, for the players to get everything they'd want out of this whole thing. So I don't really think it's going to happen. But I thought that was kind of a funny thought I had earlier. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it. Uh, I'll leave it to you. And um, yeah, appreciate you taking my call. And I really want to know what's going on with uh, Tim. Actually, Tim Roy. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. Appreciate it. Uh, Tim will be back for the final two games of the uh, of the regular season at home. Uh, so you'll be able to catch up with Tim against the Pelicans uh, on Friday because they're in Portland on Thursday. Pelicans on Friday and then the Jazz on Sunday. Uh, Tim Roy will be there uh, for those two games here at home. Kevin Dana will be back in Portland uh, for the game, the final road game of the regular season for the Warriors. But yes, Tim Roy will be back for those home games. You don't need to worry there, Wayne. Uh, you are you are right, Wayne. I talked through this a little bit earlier. Um, I I... I, I'll have to dig into this once I get off the air tonight or, or maybe tomorrow morning. I don't think it's mathematically possible for the Warriors to go all the way to the six because, Wayne, you are right. There's so many head-to-head games for these teams coming up. For example, New Orleans plays Sacramento on Thursday. Uh, the Warriors should be rooting for New Orleans in that game. That, though, uh, would cost the Warriors the opportunity to catch the Pelicans because the Warriors right now are three games behind the Pelicans with three to play. New Orleans wins any one of their last three games. The Warriors lose any one of their final three games, and the Pelicans will clinch a better record than the Golden State Warriors. However, they're playing the Kings, and the Kings are closer to the Warriors than the Pelicans are, so the Warriors should be rooting for the Pelicans. You get knocked out of catching the Pelicans, but you're closer there to catching the Kings. So, Wayne, you're exactly right. You're spot on. Um, There's so many head-to-head matchups coming up. Wayne, you pointed to the Pelicans and the Lakers. They do play. Uh, That's the final game of the regular season for those two teams on Sunday, April 14th. However... There, if the Warriors take care of their business, they don't care what what matters, what happens to the Lakers anymore. If the Warriors go three and zero, the Lakers could also go three and zero or two and zero. They have two games left. If the Warriors win out, the Lakers can win out. The Warriors will still finish ahead of the Lakers. So that result doesn't really factor into this conversation, uh, Wayne. Assuming that the Warriors do win out and and go three and zero the rest of their schedule, um, but there is so much overlap between these teams that are fighting for the last handful of spots uh, and, and doing some switching and jumping each other in the standings that I, I don't think it's possible mathematically for the Warriors to go all the way up. But nine is certainly very possible. And eight, if you get a little bit of help from the Kings, they lose two of their final three. You win out. They go 0-3. You win two of your final three. Then you will jump them and you'll finish um, potentially in the eight, if things also go well with your chase of the Lakers. Um, so that is that is possible. It is unlikely, but it is possible if you are the Golden State Warriors. 888-957-9570. We'll hear from uh, Coach Kerr coming up in just a little bit here on Warriors Wrap-Up. But let's go back out to the phone lines. 888-957-9570. Up next is Mark in Milbray. Mark, what's up? You're on Warriors Wrap-Up here on 95.7 The Game. How you doing? What's up, man? Yeah, that was uh, outstanding offense tonight. Uh, Warriors were just locked in, uh, shooting over 60%, three-point range. You're, when they're locked in like that offensively, uh, they're going to beat anybody. And that was uh, – Draymond was as efficient as he was all season from the three-point lands. And obviously Curry, Clay were doing his thing. But I just thought collectively overall the offense was in sync. They're tuned up. And this was like old – Old school Warriors basketball where everybody strength in numbers. Everybody's locked in. Starters were efficient. Bench was outstanding from Podemski to CP3. And they just overwhelmed the, the Lakers. And they hit, this was a huge win they needed to get to control their positioning in terms of the play and seating. And they got it done. And uh, we know they didn't have AD, but that's their problem. I don't know what the hell that guy's doing. Is it, He missed the game because he got poked in the eye, correct? And I think he missed the game against the Warriors. Guy's been poked tonight three times. Why the hell is he wearing goggles? That's their problem. So if you're LeBron or his teammates, you're looking at that guy sideways. What the hell are you doing missing the biggest game of our season? So that's, that's their problem. Warriors will take it out of hand because obviously they could, they could, uh, if it, they could, uh, attack the, uh, the Lakers defense without AD. And you saw they did that perfectly. So now we've got three games left. 
it's it's not going to be easy, but uh, hopefully the Warriors get some good fortune and Sacramento slips up and so they can go up to eight. So as long as the Warriors handle their business now, and if they would have just handled their business earlier throughout the season, losing all these games they didn't, they'd probably be the sixth seed right now. But nonetheless, they're in a position where they are. You at least got to be the ninth seed. So hopefully you get some help, take care of your business, win out these three games. And uh, so the, those Kings, I know they're kind of reeling right now, but they got some winnable games. Hopefully you can get some assistance uh, from them losing, and they can bump up to the eighth seed. But uh, hell of a win tonight. This was the first step they needed to get. They got it done. And now they got everything in front of them. So everybody got to lock in. Don't slip up and win all out. And uh, I feel good about this team right now. You're rolling into the playoffs, playing really good basketball. And uh, this was uh, a good sign of things to come, hopefully. And uh, thanks for the time, man. Yep. Appreciate it, Mark. Uh, the the Kings, yeah, they got, they got a couple of tough games. New Orleans and Phoenix, who are going to want to win those games as well. Uh, now they do have Portland to close the regular season. Um, but I think these Kings games, in addition to, of course, what the Warriors do, are going to be the most watched games. If the Warriors are scoreboard watching, I think now at this point, they're going to be watching the Kings more than anybody else until the Warriors lose a game. When you lose a the game, then you got to scoreboard watch the Lakers. But if you win out, doesn't matter what the Lakers do. You will finish ahead of the Lakers if you get some help from the Kings or more likely help from the Kings' opponents. Uh, and they beat the Kings a couple of times. New Orleans, Phoenix, Portland. Those are all home games for the Kings. If the Kings go, say, two, or pardon me, one and two in those three, and you win out, you will finish with the, uh, with uh, ahead of the Kings because you will gain two games on them. You are currently one game behind them. If you finish with the same record as the Kings, they have the tiebreaker, and they will finish ahead of you in the standing. So you need to completely jump them. You need to have a better record than them, so you need to gain two games on them in the final three, which is Warriors go 3-0, and Kings go 1-2, and or Warriors go 2-1, and Kings go 0-3. Those are the two ways that the Warriors can catch the Kings, and it is also worth noting if the Warriors go 3-0, and they will, no matter what happens, they'll finish ahead of the Lakers. So go 3-0 and and two losses from the Kings and the Warriors will be the 7. Or the 8, excuse me. You would be the 8. Which, considering where you have been recently, that is an incredible possibility for the Golden State Wars. If you are the 8, you get two bites at the play in Apple. If you lose the 7-8 game as the 8, which would be the road team in that 7-8 matchup, then you'd be the home team in the next game, which you would take on the winner of the 9-10 matchup. You could lose as the 8 or the 7, and you still got another chance to get into the postseason, which is why the opportunity that the Warriors have afforded themselves by winning tonight, the opportunity they have to potentially catch the Kings in the 8th spot in the Western Conference is worth pushing uh, for these three last wins. Now, you might get to a point, say, the final game of the regular season where you're locked out if the Kings win their first two games, uh, their next two, that is, the, the, the first of these final three. If they do that, then okay, you could take that last game of the regular season off if there's nothing to gain at that point. Um, but as of right now, Warriors should be gunning as hard as they can for a win in Portland and then as hard as they can for a win at home against New Orleans the next day. That's Thursday and Friday of this week, a back-to-back on the road in Portland, at home in New Orleans, then a day off, and then at home against the Jazz on Sunday to close out the regular season. And as of right now, the Warriors have every reason uh, to chase wins, to use a phrase that Steve Kerr, uh, it's kind of infam- infamous now uh, in, in this area, in, in Dub Nation, chasing wins, uh, the Warriors should be at this point until something changes uh, from the teams ahead of them in the Western Conference standings. The 9, very likely. The 8, possible, although relatively unlikely because you need some help from others. Uh, and the 10 is a worst-case scenario right now for the Golden State Warriors. 888-957-9570. Let's keep going with your phone calls. Warriors knock off the Lakers 134 to 120. The Warriors have won 8 of 9. They're a season high 9 games over 500. And how about this? With the win today the Warriors, uh they have 44 wins on the year. And remember what the Warriors finished last season with? The Warriors last year were the 6th seed. If you recall, 
and they had only won 44 games. They have 44 wins right now, and they are currently in the 10. And you still got three games left. You could win potentially 47 games, three more wins than last year, uh, and you might be like three or four spots worse than you were last year. That's how much better the Western Conference has gotten. The Warriors already have 44 wins, matching their win total from last year, and they've got three games left. All right, out to the phones we go. Again, 888-957-9570. Up next is Hunter. Hunter's in San Francisco. What's up, Hunter? You're on Warriors Wrap Up by 95.7 The Game. Right on. I'm doing all right. How are you? I can't complain. Another Warriors win, huh, Hunter? It was really good to see. Um, Not to jump too far forward, but I'm kind of curious about how the Warriors might fare in the playoffs. And in particular, it seems like one of our strengths is the bench. But a lot of teams go short in the playoffs. And I think our veterans might need the bench so they don't have to be as many minutes. But still, the other teams might be shorting their bench. What, What do you think the Warriors should do? Uh, yeah, it's a good question, Hunter. Uh, I would say, first of all, I, I love your confidence thinking about the postseason, and I know this has been a, a show full of optimism so far, um, but the postseason is still far off in my mind because you got to get through the plan. Um, but tonight, I think, and you know, maybe Thursday in Portland could as well, although the Warriors very well might think about resting someone, or maybe they go in with a plan where... You know, you're trying to play Steph 26 minutes instead of 32 or whatever it is. Maybe that that's how the Warriors approach it. So maybe it might not be a good indicator of what their postseason rotation would be. I think tonight, though, was a good idea, a good indicator of what it might be. The Warriors played nine players today outside of garbage time. Uh, five players played the final minute 47. That's Moses Moody, Usman Garuba, Guy Santos, Lester Quinones, uh, and Pat Spencer. Come on, Looney did not play today. The Warriors played a nine-man rotation. It did not include Moses Moody, and it did not include Kevon Looney. The nine-man rotation tonight, with Wiggins available, with Kaminga available, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, and Trace Jackson Davis, followed by, off the bench, in order of most minutes played to fewest, Chris Paul, Jonathan Kaminga, Brandon Pajemski, and Gary Payton the second. That's the Warriors' nine-man rotation. And I think that is the the blueprint for the Warriors at this stage. And it might not be fair to Moses Moody. You might want more from him. I think Moses has been playing some of his best basketball of his career lately when he's gotten some consistent run. Finally making threes at a relatively consistent clip. Um, But when you get to this stage of the season... It's difficult to play 10 or 11 guys. And with Wiggins back, with Kaminga back now for a couple of games, there just isn't a ton of minutes to go around. And if the Warriors have found a nine-man rotation that works like it did tonight, I don't think Steve Kerr is going to be itching to make a change. I think tonight was the blueprint for the Warriors. Your five starters, which includes Trace Jackson Davis, and then your four guys off the bench, Chris Paul, Jonathan Kaminga, Pajemski, and GP2. I think unless something major changes, that's the Warriors' nine-man rotation in games in which they feel like they desperately got to win. And maybe that's not the case in Portland. And maybe, I mean, they still desperately want to win that game, but maybe it's not the case because that's a, a team that isn't necessarily trying to win basketball games and you feel like you can win that game without maybe your best do-or-die rotations. Uh, But in games where the Warriors are playing a quality opponent and really want to win, i.e. a game like tonight or a play-in game or a postseason game, I think the Warriors are going to turn to this nine-man rotation, which does not include Moses Moody. That's the writing on the wall, at least in my opinion. Good good question, though, um, because this is something that has been a question all season. For the Golden State Warriors, the rotation. How many minutes is Kaminga getting? But Jemsey's playing too many minutes. Where's Moses Moody's minutes? GP2 is playing too many. Like Wiggins needs to be benched and Kaminga to the starting lineup. And Clay doesn't need to be playing 32. He's struggling. This has been a question all season long. I think the Warriors are at a point where you just got to say, all right, sorry, Moses. It sucks. It's unfortunate. Um, but but you are not in the nine-man rotation as it stands. I think tonight might be the blueprint for the Warriors. Now, things can change on a a given night, 
I mean, it's happened before where the plan was Moody not to be in the rotation. I referenced the game earlier. It was the game early in the season, maybe in November or December. The Warriors in Sacramento, they build like a 21-point lead, maybe even more than that in the first half in Sacramento. And the lead begins to dwindle in the second half. And Steve, after approaching Moody pregame, telling him that you were not going to be in the rotation tonight, pulls Moody off the bench and says, hey, Moses, we need a spark. Give me something. And Moses, I think early in the fourth quarter, hits like three straight threes to help keep the Warriors afloat in that game. Then he gets pulled out and the Warriors ultimately lose. And that was a whole firestorm of Steve Kerr not playing Moses and stick with the hot hand and all of that. That's not why I bring it up. I just bring it up to say that on a given night, a plan can change. If Kaminga is really struggling, if Wiggins is really struggling, if Pajemski commits four turnovers in his first five minutes, maybe that allows for someone else like Moody to slip in. But if things go relatively smooth for the Warriors, uh, I don't know if Moody's going to be in the rotation in these big moments moving forward. 888-957-9570. Let's hear from Coach Steve Kerr. Maybe he addressed his nine-man rotation. Here is Warriors head coach Steve Kerr after the Warriors win today in Los Angeles. Final score, 134-120. to 120. Here's the head coach. That was the game, basically, because I didn't feel like we played that well, but we made, you know, a million threes. And so the ball was going in, but I didn't think we were sharp. A lot of uh, possessions where we just, um, you know, weren't quite... Uh, locked in or the, our passing was off target and we were a little disjointed, but the ball kept going. I mean, Draymond going five for five in, in a half, you don't, you know, you don't see that often, but um, everybody got going and to shoot whatever, 63% from three, that's, that's crazy. Like an emphasis of the game plan heading into this kind of matchup with the Lakers team that has, I mean, obviously no idea, but that kind of size of just, let's try and shoot the lights out or did it just happen that way? We always try to shoot the lights out. <laughs> Doesn't always happen. Uh, but we had plenty of looks. They, you know, they, they were playing off of um, Draymond and, and um, so he took the ones that were there and that helped us get off to a, a great start. It's been the process, right? Because the teams sag off of him sometimes. They sort of dare him to shoot. And he's talked about how there was a time when he didn't shoot. Like he wouldn't be able to punish teams for, mm-hmm. for doing that. What's he What's he done to get himself in a position to, to hit five threes like well, he that? He worked really hard last summer on his shot. He knew that he would be um, asked to, to take more threes um, you know, we anticipated playing him uh, at the four more often this year with Loon and then eventually with Trace. And, and um, so he, he worked hard at it. I mean, when the guy makes shots, it, you know, he just credit him for, you know, for making them, but for, for putting the work in and I think really getting uh, his mind right coming into the season. I mean, you kind of talked this week about your outside. Now you do, you do this and your nine. Eight became a little bit more reasonable yeah. tonight. Do you feel kind of getting a little bit closer to the reality of the possibility? Yeah, I mean, we need a little help, obviously. But, um, you know, what we've talked about is just just win. Just take care of our, our business and see how everything else shakes out. Um, so many teams are playing against each other in the group that we're in. And, um you just never know. So got to keep going, keep winning, and um, see how it plays out. Yep, Steve Kerr is spot on. That's the Warriors head coach post game tonight in Los Angeles after the Warriors 134 to 120 win. Just take care of your business, win your final three, and, and see what happens. You've got Portland on Thursday in Portland, and then you return home Friday for the back end of a back to back, a road and home back to back. That home game on Friday, the back end of that back to back is New Orleans. And then you close out the regular season at home on Sunday against the Utah Jazz. You feel pretty good about beating Portland and about beating Utah. Those are two teams that aren't necessarily trying too hard to win basketball games right now. The New Orleans one is certainly going to be the toughest of the bunch in my mind. It's uh, the best opponent with the most to gain and lose still at that stage of the season. And it's on a back-to-back. And it's at home where the Warriors actually are our worst team this year, oddly enough. Um, but you feel good about Portland and Utah, and then the big question is going to be um, that game against New Orleans. And Steve is right. you got so many of these teams that are fighting head-to-head for like the 7 through 10 spots in the Western Conference, um, and I guess you could include 6 because that is where New Orleans is at 6. you got so many head-to-head games that you're going to have a lot of friendly fire, and if it works out, 
uh, if it works out in the Warriors' way where maybe you get a couple of teams beating up on the Kings, there's a possibility where the Kings could fall to the 10 or the 9, and the Warriors could leapfrog both the Lakers and the Kings to the 8. Uh, so plenty to play for for the Warriors, but Steve Kerr is right. All you can do uh, is just go out there and win your three games and see what else happens around the association the rest of the way. And the Warriors uh, playing, in my mind, the best basketball of their season right now, and it bodes well for them into the postseason. But say even if they do get help and they're the eight, we also got to try to put this in perspective because the Warriors are playing great basketball, and I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer at all, and I want... I want a reason. I've been searching for a reason to be confident about this team for a really long time. And they're they're finally giving it to us, right? Like, finally. They've won 8 of 9. They win the season series against the Lakers. They're kind of getting the, the Crypto.com Arena monkey off their back. They're playing well down there. It gives them confidence uh, to where, you know, if they go there in a play-in matchup, they feel like they can win. Um but you still got to get over the playing hump. Even if things do break your way and you jump to the eight, you still got to win a play-in game, and then you're playing maybe the the Nuggets or maybe the, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Like, it's not easy. I want a reason to be confident, and they're giving me at least more reason than they have all season long, but we also kind of got to put in perspective that the best we can really hope for is, like, the eight seed. Now, you could get... The seven, I know, and the six, probably not. But, like, realistically, the best that this Warriors team is going to do is the eight seed. And I know it's, you know, it's how you finish. How are you playing right now? What have you done for me lately, right? And the Warriors have done a lot for us lately. But this is still a team that's going to have to get through the playing just to gain the right to play maybe the defending NBA champions. Like, that's... That's the, the perspective that is going on here. But considering where this team was a couple of weeks ago, I'll take this reality over what we were thinking the reality was going to be. I mean, before this stretch for the Warriors and when the Rockets were winning all of their games, we were worried that the Warriors might not even make the plane. And now there's a realistic chance they could be the eighth seed. So this is a drastic improvement for the Warriors, but we do also have to couch it with the fact that even at the, if things go 100% right for the Warriors the rest of the way and and our optimism is paid off, we're still looking at a play-in team that's going to be the 7 or the 8 seed in the Western Conference. And you're going to have to take on one of the best teams in the NBA to get out of the first round. It's going to be a gigantic challenge, but there is much more reason now to be confident that they can handle that challenge uh, at any other point in the season. You're much more confident in them now than any other moment this regular season. All right, we're going to go back to the phones in just a second, but first, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union, 888-957-9570. Up next is Shaka in Berkeley. Shaka, what's up? You're on Warriors Wrap-Up by 95.7 The Game. Hey, man, how you doing tonight, man? I'm doing well, Shaka. How you feeling after that win? Oh, man, it was amazing, man. Seeing him out there like that, man. It was like old school. It was like old times, man. And everybody's counting us out. I was watching Steve Renee, and he was saying how every, we, were, we were just a play-in team, and we can't spend all that money just to be a play-in team. It's going to be some changes have to be made, and everybody's singing our funeral, man. And just for them to respond like that. And come out like that and shoot the lights out the board. It still is the Splash Brothers plus Draymond. We all we got a. They need to check out our basketball cards, man. That think that they're not really looking at our basketball cards. We're four time champion, Olympic champions. They, they want to count us out, but we with the new and the old is blending such such greatness, man. And I think we're going we're going to beat Dallas, man. We're going to beat Denver. I know we're going to beat Denver. I'm saying it right now. April's ninth. We're going to beat Denver, man. All right, sure. I, I, like Dray- I like Draymond against Minnesota. Dray- Minnesota's best score, I think Draymond can stop him in a seven-game series. I would I would bet money on it. I know he's a fantastic, and Jordan even said he plays like him. But I would love to see Draymond trying to really stop him. And I, I, I would bet on Draymond. So I would bet on 
my team before any of those other teams because they haven't been where we've been. All right, man. Thanks for the call. Thanks for talk, taking my call. Yeah, appreciate it, Shaka. I love your confidence. I love your confidence, and you know, I'm not I'm not circling Denver at all because again, the Warriors just just to take on the defending champions, and it's not set in stone. One through three in the West. Uh, could move around a bit. Right now, one through three, as we take a look at the updated standings, the T-Wolves and the Nuggets are deadlocked, 55-24, and 24, OKC. Their big comeback victory over the Kings tonight keeps them with a chance to be the one. They are one game behind both those two teams right now. Minnesota uh, and Denver are tied, OKC one game behind, so we don't know exactly how it's going to play out and who the eighth seed or the seventh seed would play. Um... There's a possibility it's Denver. There's a possibility it's Minnesota or OKC. Any of those three. Those are locked into the top three now in the Western Conference. Um, but the Warriors have to get through the play and even to get there. And I and I love Shaka's confidence and his optimism. Um, but who knows what could happen in one play-in game, let alone potentially two play-in games. If the Warriors shoot like they did tonight, they'll beat the Lakers. They'll beat the Kings. Like... Very few NBA teams are going to beat the Warriors if they play like they did tonight. I mean, they hit a season-high 26 threes. That's three off of an NBA single-game record for a single team. One off of a Warriors franchise record for most made threes in a single game. It's easy to look at this performance and just say, well, when they play like this, who's going to beat them, right? This was legitimately their best shooting out of the entire season. Now, there's reason to be confident like Clay Thompson over a relatively large sample now is shooting the basketball really well over his last four, nearly 50% from downtown 20 for 42 over his last four. That's about 47 and a half percent from downtown over four games. Draymond Green's been shooting the three ball really, really well this season. And tonight was maybe the best three-point shooting night of his career. He was five for five in the first half. And Andrew Wiggins now, over a large sample size, is playing really good basketball. And tonight, 17 points was three of five for downtown four or three blocks. Like, you get those sort of things together moving forward. Yes, this team does not feel like a normal 10 or a 9 or an 8 or a 7 seed. They feel better than that. But it is a little bit dangerous to just say, ah, they play like they did tonight. Who's going to stop them? Yeah, probably nobody. But there's a reason why, because this statistically, shooting-wise, was a little bit of an outlier. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer and, and downplay anything the Warriors did tonight because what they did tonight was awesome. But let's not just assume they're going to shoot 63.4% from downtown moving forward. That's not going to happen. But again, there's reason to be confident. Everything I just laid out, Clay's growing sample size of good shooting. Same for Andrew Wiggins. I thought Steph Curry tonight, the most disciplined game we've seen from him in a really long time. Steph Curry was awesome in this game. He played 32 minutes and 19 seconds, 23 points, 7 of 9 shooting, 6 for 6 from downtown. The way that Steph Curry was more selective and careful with both his shots and his decisions with the ball in his hands, I think it speaks to what the day off for the Utah game did for him and how he might be approaching the rest of this regular season. He hasn't necessarily been hunting, taking bad shots, taking heat checks. Very, very selective. Only one turnover today for Stephen Curry in his 32-plus minutes. 23 points on nine field goal attempts, seven rebounds, and eight assists. He made the right decision, the right play with the ball in his hands every single time. Steve Kerr has said, when Steph is fatigued, where does that come out in its game? Where does that show itself? And he said in decision-making, whether it is passing, whether it is um, taking bad shots, rushed shots, forced shots, heat checks that are from way downtown that are likely not going to go in, also a little bit lazy getting back on defense, that sort of thing is what um, Steph Curry shows when he's fatigued. Guess what? He did none of those things tonight, and it's probably thanks to the day off that he got. Steph Curry was a killer 
with his mind and the decisions that he made tonight. And then, of course, you know what he's gonna what you're gonna get when he's shooting those open threes. Six for six from downtown tonight. It was the best of both worlds for Steph. A very uh, calm, sophisticated, selective game from Steph Curry, and then you get the greatest three point shooter of all time on a little bit of a heater. Six for six from downtown. Steph Curry was awesome in this game as well. All right, a couple more calls, and then we'll wrap things up here on Warriors Wrap Up. Up next is Nick in Oakland. What's up, Nick? You're on with Mark Randy on 95.7 The Game. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. First-time caller, so hopefully you can be patient with me. But, I got you, man. All right. I just want to take it in a bit of a different direction, which is the subjective quality of the Warriors. Beyond just the stats and everything else, I think we can't neglect to think about the chemistry the chemistry of having a core group of players who are able to understand each other's minds and how they're going to play. And Kura struggled with that all year by trying different combinations, but it's always whether he can get a group that has those subtle qualities of understanding where passes are going and orchestrating. I, I would just say like a, a rock band, or something like that, playing with a sense of joy and energy that makes them stronger together. Because beyond all of that, it doesn't really matter. But unless that warrior's feeling is there, that supports Steph, who plays with such great joy, and like Mark Jacob has said, one of the nicest people ever on earth, none of it matters. They become a force that's beyond anything that we've ever seen before and that's what I think is important I think they're coming close to that and those are the subtle qualities that can make them go forward yeah uh, I think it's a good call Nick and something that I haven't really been thinking about but I, I do think you can you can kind of feel it a little bit it is a little bit odd though because like you just had last week a little bit ago, the blow-up in Orlando where Draymond Green gets ejected less than four minutes into a really important game and Steve Kirsch calls it unforgivable and you have Steph Curry in tears reacting to it. Uh, and we don't know what goes on behind closed doors, um, but you, know, you just, that's the backdrop of this. And then you had, you know, you know the, the Wiggins excused absence for personal reasons and, and not that the Warriors team was was turning on him or wondering and not I'm not saying that at all, but you do have these like weird moments in the season where you could maybe question like is everybody all in on this group and is there anybody that has any reservations? Um but right now they feel like a relatively well oiled machine, not just how they're playing on the floor, um, but also the way that they're interacting with each other and the smiles on everybody's faces and, and clay has that, that good vibe back. And maybe it's because he's starting. Maybe it's because he's just making his shot. Uh, and, and Draymond green has been playing good basketball since that ejection in Orlando and Andrew Wiggins is putting it together. So I, maybe it's a chicken or, or the egg situation as well. Like are the warriors good vibes here and the chemistry feels good because they are They've strung together wins and individuals are playing well, or is it more because um, their vibes are good and as a result, they're winning basketball games? It's probably a little bit of both, but I mean, honestly, winning fixes everything and the Warriors have been for a long stretch now. Like, this is legitimate. I got I to gotta find this stat here for you. Uh, for a really long time, the Warriors have now been one of the best teams in the NBA. Uh, let's see. Since January 30th, so we're talking about like all of February, all of March, and now the first week and a half of April. So you've got two plus months. Since January 30th, the Warriors have the second most wins in the NBA, trailing only Boston. The Warriors have 24 wins since January 30th. Boston has 26. That's the only team that has more. The Warriors have more wins than every other team in the Western Conference since January 30th. Like, that's a long stretch of basketball where you've been one of the best teams in the NBA. 
Now, what's odd about it is you're still the 10 seed as it stands right now. Despite that stretch, you haven't really been able to make any ground on anybody. I mean, you've made some ground, but you haven't been able to actually leapfrog many in the standings. Now, maybe that's coming here in the final three games of the regular season. It's possible, but that's how difficult it is to make up ground in a good conference like this. Like, say the Warriors go 8-2. and two. That's a great stretch of 10 games, but guess what? When all your opponents go 7-3, and three, you're gaining one measly game over like a 10-day a ten, a, a ten stretch, which is like almost a 10-game a stretch, which is almost like a three-week stretch. Like gaining one game over the course of three weeks, it isn't really going to do you much when you've dug yourself such a hole. Um, so on one hand, it's great that the Warriors have been, for a long time now, a really good basketball team in terms of wins and losses, but on the other end, it's there's still the ten seed. Uh, there is there's a, a weight here. You, you got to try to balance and, and find a, a nice middle ground with this conversation. Uh, but there is definitely reason to be confident. And, and to our caller's point, maybe some of the reason why they've turned this around is some of the the chemistry and the good vibes. But I'd argue, I mean, they've been winning for a while. I think that's probably been a bigger reason why the the chemistry feels improved and why you feel some good vibes emanating out of this team right now. But it's probably a little bit of both. But there's no denying the fact that they have been really, really good over the last two-plus months now. 24 wins since January 30th. Uh, That is the second most wins in the NBA during that stretch. All right, Warriors wrap up here on 95-7 the game. Mark Randy with you. The Warriors knock off the Lakers 134 to 120. The Warriors now 44 and 35. The Lakers 45 and 35. Lakers have two games left. The Warriors have three. If the Warriors win out, they will pass the Lakers in the Western Conference standings. Let's get to our hardest worker of the game, which is brought to you by the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, who works hard to serve the community. Are you looking for a career in law enforcement? Learn more about job opportunities at joinacso.com. Uh, so many potential people to pick for a hardest worker of the game tonight. I was running through some of the offensive numbers earlier. I mean, some crazy, crazy outputs offensively. Um, this is actually a really challenging one. I don't know who I should go with. Clay deserves some love. Uh, he's gotten a lot of love re- recently, though, with his hot shooting. I think for the 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 historic way it happened, I got to go with Draymond Green. Draymond Green's our hardest worker of the game tonight, brought to you by the Alameda County Sheriff's Office. He scores 15 points. He was 5 for 5 from 3 at one point, finishes the game 5 for 7 from the field and from the three-point line, also 6 rebounds and 10 assists, had a block as well. Draymond Green is our hardest worker of the game tonight. He certainly deserves it, but Wiggins deserves a shout for it as well. Clay Thompson, Steph Curry off the bench, but Jemski deserves a shout out. He was five for six from the field. Chris Paul wasn't as efficient. I mean, he was five for 10. That's 50%. But when Pajemski was five for six and Steph was seven for nine, it kind of pales in comparison. Uh, GP2, I thought, had a really good stint off the bench as well. He iced the game with an epic block of Rui Hachimura. Uh, led to a clay three. GP2 had a couple of threes of his own. A lot of love to go around for the Warriors, specifically offensively tonight. Uh, But I will single out Draymond Green as our hardest worker of the game tonight. Again, brought to you by the Alameda County Sheriff's Office. All right, well, that'll just about do it for us today here on Warriors Wrap-Up. Again, the Warriors win 134 to 120. Uh, They are now a half game behind the Lakers for the nine and a full game behind the Kings for the eight. If the Warriors win out, they will finish at worst as the nine because they uh, control their own destiny when it comes to the Lakers. Uh, The Warriors are a half game behind, but even in the loss column, Warriors one more game left, uh, three games left, one more game left versus the Lakers. One more game remaining on their schedule than the Lakers do is a better way to put it. The Warriors have three games left. The Lakers have two. If the Warriors win out, no matter what the Lakers do, the Warriors will leapfrog the Lakers because they have the tiebreaker. And if they get some help from the Kings, they can also leapfrog the Kings. Some combination of three Warriors wins and two Kings losses or three Kings losses and two Warriors wins, that would get you ahead of the Kings 
in the Western Conference standings as well. Anything beyond that is exceedingly unlikely, but the 8 is possible. The 9 is very possible. The 10 is now a worst-case scenario for the Golden State Warriors. All right, one final time, Warriors 134, Lakers 120. Up next for the Warriors, they're in action on uh, on Thursday in Portland. Tip-off for that game, 7 o'clock. Coverage begins at 6 here on 95-7 the game. I'll be with you for that one as well for the final road game of the season for the Golden State Warriors. Thursday, the 11th of April, 7 o'clock in Portland. Pre-game coverage begins at 6 here on 95-7 the game. All right, for Chris O'Connell, for Sterling Bennett, my name is Mark Granny signing off. Dubs win 134-120. to We'll talk to you on Thursday on 95-7 the game. Get nachos, tacos, empanadas, spicy queso with jalapeno.